over the PowerPoint presentation um, and how to present it. Um, you haven't seen me do this yet. Julia has seen me do it a few times. Um, no, it's from the other side of the laptop. Always from the other side. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, the first thing is a little bit about um, working with this laptop and with this presentation. Um, this is what it looks like when you first pull it up, which in this case is Rox's listing presentation. If you go up to the view and click on present, it'll throw it full view. And then you can use either your arrows to advance um, or you can use the little arrows down here to advance it. All right. I always start my presentation. Um, let's take a few minutes first to review it. Um, this is where we've got, I'm telling them what I'm going to tell them. Right. Um, when we take train the presenter, which you are going to love that class. Okay. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> um, train, uh, one of the things that they say the best learning environment for people um, for retention is to tell them what you're going to tell them, tell it to them, and then tell them what you told them. Mm -hmm. Right? So with this, our first slide we've got is need analysis, which is telling them what we're going to tell them. Sorry, it's just a slide that you broke up and made eye contact, so I will say this briefly just so that you know and you can leave it alone. Seamus and I are working on getting the one drive thing for the CTE, and then we'll put that in place for you. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Turns out that tracking system is free to us. Oh, my God. Fantastic. Wait so, till you see. These are <laughs> <our choices>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> It'll replace the daily activity form, and then it'll oh, integrate cool. it, and it'll challenge. tell us where we are, are we ahead on, or are we behind on oh, activities, cool. goals, outcomes. Yeah. That's great. Change your underwear. <laughs> All right. So needs, needs analysis. analysis. Then Bree put this beautiful little graphic. Um, and with the needs analysis, um, the first thing, uh, in preparation of the listing appointment, I always take a few minutes, Brie, when somebody has done the pre-qualification script, she prints it off and puts it right into the listing appointment. Mm -hmm. So I review that. There are a few things I do. I always try to get to a listing appointment 15 minutes early and park a little bit up the street. Um, that gives me a buffer in case I'm late. But more importantly, it allows me to take another swing through that pre-qualification, read it off, so that I walk in there and what that does I think is it seems together in their mind that when they're talking to one team member it's getting to another. Yeah. I remember when um, my husband had his brain surgery. Um, you have this horrifying six minute appointment with a neurosurgeon and he's the rock star and he shows you a really scary ass picture. Yeah. And then he tells you what they're going to do about it. And then he says, well, we'll see you next Thursday. And and that's it. Gone. You're done. Yeah. Right? Well, with Dwayne, on the way out the door, and this guy says, you know, they also say these are the things that can happen. You can die. You can be paralyzed. You can, this is what we're hoping for, you know, creates expectations. And one of the things he said was because of the location of this tumor, it was right connected in with all these nerves and mm -hmm. muscles. And Dwayne, on the way, as he's on his Mr. Six Dollars, is on the, you know, six minutes is on the way out the door. Um, says, I'm a musician, I use my hands. Um, try to be careful. Well, cut to eight days later when Dwayne has had this surgery and he's in recovery. Every nurse that walked in there, every occupational therapist, every bedpan guy asked him what type of music he played. Wow. <laughs> they right? communicated. They communicated. Yeah. Mr. Six Minutes got it into a file. And yep. everybody else reviewed that. And right. what it gave me a feeling was, was this is institutional culture. <laughs> Which right? you don't find very often. Which you don't find. That you were lucky enough to find. Yeah. So when somebody comes in and it's <coughs> obvious that I know the conversation you had. Right. Right. That gives them that first swing at institutional trust. Mm -hmm. Right. In our team. Right. You're in good hands. Yep. Because a team that. can either be just a clusterfuck, or right. it can be um, something that's really of use. Right. The communication is the first indication of if they can handle it. Right. right. Are we talking? talking? I think the number one complaint that you hear about teams mm -hmm. is a lack of communication. No communication. Yeah. 
it's the number one complaint that you hear about a team. And our coach says all the time that communication is the lubrication of a good right. business. Right. Right. We'll lubricate these people yeah. to death. We're going <laughs> to lube those bad boys. <laughs> so um, I've already told them the first thing we're going to do is needs analysis. Um, I uh, spoke with Julia. She told me that your major concern is timing here. Is that right? Great. And I, I just take some more notes on it. And then I at, tell me more about that. I drill down deeper so it doesn't seem like I'm just asking them the same questions over again. Then I start asking them um, about just that drill down process, that needs analysis. Um, I work a lot off of that that uh, pre qualification. Yeah, that's why it's so important for us. If you don't have a snippet of the conversation, is very important. I know that we're always supposed to have the pre qualification form. If we don't have it, is that something that you go over in the in the presentation with? Yeah, we'll do some more. Um, so the more armed with information is is going to be. The powerful listing. And when you start, absolutely, why not just print the damn thing off and use that for your needs analysis? Right. Sure. So if you don't have a copy of it, um, and maybe we can ask Bree to just um, include one to include a blank one if a non-blank one doesn't exist. It'll prompt you to ask all the right questions. That's right. exactly right. it. Right. Right. Good. Um, so then I drill down on those questions a little bit. Then I say, great. Let's take a look at our house. One of the areas I differ from Bold. I like walking a house with a client. It extends the time of it. Okay. I get it if you want to do the 10 minute listing appointment like Lance Loken does. You don't have to. Right? But I think that it is a great rapport builder. Right. You start seeing what they're proud of. show you the house. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. make them sit at the dining room table. Yeah. I just don't see that as being They don't get to show off building. their home. <laughs> I think it's right. off-putting. Right. I think so too. I think it's off putting. Sit here and Shows you're there for one purpose, and it's to get papers signed. Right. Not to look at their house, not right. to. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't have the time to have you tell me your home. You just felt right. paperwork all over. Not only right. that, but I think from a product knowledge point of view, I don't know shit about their house. They live there. Right. right. <laughs> you right. know, what the hell? So I, I, I don't agree with that. So I like doing the walkthrough. And whether or not there's anything worth taking notes on, I take notes anyway. Right. I always slip over a page and I start writing notes. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, great! You've got the extra strong, you know, the the double size um, screws on this track right. deck. Oh, that helps. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Very yeah. Good. Right. Okay. <laughs> oh, back up nice. just a second. I think we glossed over something I feel is an important part of the presentation. Yeah. I've observed is that you set the expectation that we're going to make a decision about business. Absolutely. We're having a great rapport here. And you've told me what is important about you about the sale of this house, and I think I really get that and everything. So I'll tell you what, let's take a look at the house, and who knows if you like us, we like, we like you, you, maybe, maybe we'll we decide do some business. business. Right. So maybe, maybe get up and go look. Maybe at the end of this, it's where right you say decision. Yeah. Um, so you you go through first. We're going to do a needs analysis. Talk about you know what your well, goals. Well, how need. I actually present this. Right. Is I say. Look, I used to joke around that my mother couldn't get up in the morning if it wasn't done a list. Every it's not time. funny. Right. It comes down. <laughs> <laughs> right. So to keep me on track, this right. is right. how we're going to follow it means this through. Realistic for the presentation has begun. Right. right. Exactly. Right. That's when it's begun. <laughs> is she doing this on the computer? Like, oh, you know, my mother used to say I couldn't get out of bed without a list. It's just not funny anymore. Right. Right. <laughs> and then out I come with my list. Right. Right. So I say first, I'm going to drill down on what what you need out of this. Right. Uh, move. Um, we're going to take some time for you to walk through your home so you can show me the features and anything that might not be obvious. And awesome. we're going to go over our marketing plan, let you know what it, um, what we do to sell a house for yeah. you. Um, then I'd like to discuss our team because when you're hiring us, you're hiring tw uh, 12 people. Right. Right, for the price of one. Then we're going to discuss what would be the, um, uh, the, the best price to list your house at that's most likely to cause it to sell. Then we're going to review some documents, and if at the end of that you like me and I like you, Andrew, we may decide to do business. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So basically, each one of these, you briefly mention it, give a sentence about what we're going to be doing during that part of the process, then and in. then you move on. So this is telling them what I'm going to tell them. Right. And right. I've set the appointment. And you've basically gotten the agreement that they're going to like us, so they're going to sign up. Right. You set that expectation, though. Right. You I'm know, here right. for a decision. We're here to right. do business. Right. I'm not here to just make new pussy foot around. I'm not and, holding yeah, your hand for two here. hours. No. Right. So no, that you can say no. We're right. Exactly. Business. I got enough friends. Yeah. yeah. I remember a gal in, in high school. The poor thing. She was a virgin. I mean, in college, she was a virgin. And some football player finally betted her. And after two or three of these, 
she said to him, you know, I'd just like to be friends. And he said, I got enough friends. She cried for a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. That is brutal. It's brutal. <laughs> savage. It is savage. Savagery. It's true, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, um, then with needs analysis, so that's what I drilled through. So this first time I'm swinging through just explaining what these slides are, then we'll do the actual presentation, same okay. way we have them with the contracts. So the walkthrough, I always take notes on the walkthrough. Um, so at that point, when you get to the walkthrough side slide, you say, so let's go and take a look around Let's look at your home. And you just leave that she and go take a look. Cool. Slap. I do a little slap and say, let's go look at your home. <laughs> Great enthusiasm. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. yeah. And it's also awesome. like, here's the point where we're going to do right. something else. Right, uh -huh. exactly. Uh -huh. And I'm pattern controlling it. Yep. It's a pattern interrupter. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So the walkthrough, I always take notes regarding this if it's a, if it's a plain Jane house. Um, I ask them questions. Right. right. Um, the type of things I always ask in the walkthrough is the age of the major systems. Right. How old is your roof? Mm -hmm. right. um, and maybe even we can create over time, create a form for that walkthrough, which I think would be awesome. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I mean, maybe for the needs analysis, you know, on the on the pre-qualification form, we have questions like what's special about your home? Right. On a scale of one to 10, um, where would you rate your home? What would make it a 10? I think those are great questions yeah. for the walkthrough. Yeah. So maybe maybe we have that form in there and we just skip those when we're doing the needs analysis yeah. and then come back to them when we're doing the walkthrough and it take it more notes right. in the boxes that are provided there. Right. Or you could find a way to work it in. Right. So, uh, in so your you area, said this. Right, you said right. it's a, you know on a scale of one to ten, your house is a ten. Right. Um, and uh, let's just review the systems because I think sure. a lot of people don't don't talk about that. Right. How old is your furnace? Uh, right. I think it's original. Uh, okay, that okay. might pull it off a ten a little bit. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, gives you something to work on. Right. Uh, cool. But the walkthrough, I always take notes, awesome. and uh, we'll work on developing a walkthrough form to make sure that the systems are are, are handled at the top of it. Um, or maybe at the bottom mm -hmm. once you've got a little right. bit more rapport. Right. right. I Some usually hit those when I'm on certain systems. Asking you ask warranties. questions like when was the last time you had it serviced and cleaned? And exactly. Awesome. Because awesome. I, I view the walkthrough as an opportunity for me to show them that I am seeking product knowledge. Right. 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 And they have it. Right. And I want it because I need it. Right. Because I'm going to sell their house. Well, shoot. And on right. the back end, it shows you that as a buyer's agent, we're informed as hell. Yeah. Right. Are you going to be asking these questions and looking at these things when you're mystified about this amazing dream home that you just stumbled across? How old is the furnace? How old is the water really heater? How old is the air conditioning unit? Right. Questions that are expensive and important. That are expensive and important, yeah. yep. And I always refrain from anything judgmental remotely or opinion oriented oh, God, yes. in that walkthrough. Yeah, yeah. A great right. example was the one with the paint. Right. Oh, yeah, they, we were in a house. It was Fruit Loops. Right. Every. We're not even talking about every room or every wall of every room. It right. was every trim. Tr the yeah, niches. everything was different colors. The niches. The yeah. niches were different. The colors. niches were different colors, and all of them Fruit Loops. It was atrocious. <laughs> all right. Well, what I'm saying is, we're going through, and he's saying, "Yeah, a lot of people didn't like the paint, but we really like it, and we did this, and blah blah blah." I'm like, "Hey, I got color all over my house. I love it. Oh, right. I put a cat run in my house. Yeah. Oh, I love it." Yeah. Um, while you're throwing up in the back of your throat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, <I'm> taking <laughs> that bottle yeah. at the end where she's going to tell him. Yeah. But what I'm doing is I'm putting him at, at ease about it. Right. Saying, I like Agreement. your home. Right. right. I like what you've done here. Yeah. Then when I get to the point of saying, but a buyer won't. Right. 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 And you want top dollar to, and as such, we we're going to need to pay that. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. And, it, and then it's not coming from you either. Right. You know, you've already agreed with him a hundred times that you love his paint. I'd have done the it's same those thing. asshole buyers that are plain house. James. Oh, love it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, I love tasteless it. Tasteless people. Yeah. Those tasteless people. I hope he leaves it that color while he's for sale by owner. Right. He will. Oh, that just guarantees our success. Yep. He will. Yeah. Well, and the and the on the contrary of that too. I mean, there there are places where you want to keep your mouth shut because you'd be like, oh, I really love that feature that built-in entertainment system or whatever and for That's all been the band yeah, band yeah exactly yes. for all you know they fucking hate it and yeah. saying opinionated things only cause judgment that's exactly so, it so it's just the walkthrough is about 
um, questioning. Questions. Questions. Question, question, question. Yeah, Joel, Joel, what, Joel Rico said that. Choose, what made you choose that color? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. How did you do that? Like it's right. just, oh, yeah, that's great. That's wonderful. Oh, what fun. Oh, <laughs> sassy. 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 You sassy, man. Like, <laughs> uh, because the walkthrough is about product knowledge and its report. Report building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? absolutely. That's exactly what it is. Okay. Market strategy. Then we get back down and say, okay, let's talk about our market strategy. Um, then uh, I almost always do this, not always, because, uh, you know, I skip through a lot of shit. Right, there's right. a lot Keith, there. I actually yeah. have seen this presentation. Keith and I did it with his sister. And, and he just breezed through. Oh, okay. Right. okay. Um, I'll say, look, uh, by emphasis. now, you know, most realtors do the three Ps. They put it in the sign, they put a sign in the yard, they put it on the MLS, and they pray that bad boy sells. Yep, that's right. it. <laughs> We, we do a few other things. Yeah. First of all, um, and I breeze over this a little bit because they're, they're, um, they're handled a little bit more. I say one of the things that we really do is that we use a professional stager. And I almost always say, your home is beautiful, right. but we need to turn it into a product. Right. And a stager is going to walk in here, and I don't have this skill. Right. I can walk by a hole in the drywall every day for 10 years and not notice it. <laughs> right. Right? But what my stager does is she's able to walk into a room, assess what is the best feature of this room, and arrange the staging of the room to draw the eye to that feature. That. Right. Right. And that's what we want to do. We want the eye drawn to the best feature of every room, and that's why a stager is vital. Right. Right? Um, we also do, and then I'll skip ahead to the next one, we do um, professional photography. We do high definition photography. And I am completely appalled that when you're selling somebody's half million dollar home, their most significant asset, you're gonna take pictures of it with an iPhone? Right. Whatever. Yeah. And that's almost exactly my script. Word for word. Right. right? <laughs> I show outrage at my Right. At your competition. At my competition. <laughs> right. I say, look at this. These are the same rooms. You see how the high definition photography, it's expensive. Right. And we incur that expense. But the reason we do it is because it takes the house and it shows it in its greatest light. And the thing that's very, very important to know right now is that when they walk through your front door, that's the second showing. Right. The first showing is online. Right. Absolutely. Right. Then I'll go back to this again. Online marketing is vital. We push out to, um, we push out to 350 sites. Right. Um, the other thing that we do, the other thing that we do, there are two things that we do that are different than our competitors. One is that we push out to 350 websites, which is 250 more than most realtors put and uh, most real estate companies do. Um, so we, we beat them by two thirds. The other thing that we do is, um, I'm not sure if you're aware how the business models of Realtor.com and and Trulia and and um, um, Zillow. Zillow work. Zillow, yeah. Right. But their business model is to get people like me, realtors, to buy advertising. So what I do is I buy a zip code. And I say, great, anybody who clicks on any one of everybody's listings in that zip code, their call is going to come to me. So what that means for you and your house, Andrew, is that somebody who's never even seen your home and has no vested interest in purchasing it or in getting it sold is the person that's feeling the calls from our potential buyers. Hmm. That's unacceptable. Right. Keller Williams, one of the reasons I'm with this company is because they have gone to considerable expense to create exclusivity agreements so that when somebody clicks on your house, it's coming to somebody on my team who actually knows the product and has an interest in getting it sold. Oh, right. That makes sense. Right. That makes sense. Very important. Right. Um, the other thing that we do is we do... Um, we, we don't just passively sit around and wait for your house to sell those three P's again. Right. Right. And there's a misconception that any house you put a sign in the yard that it's going to get sold. And you know what? A lot of them are selling. A lot of them are selling fast. We're selling them in six days. But the real issue here is that um, I believe that the more energy you put into a listing, the more activity you're going to get on that listing. Correct. So with that in mind, we do a door knocking program because 10% of, of home sales are going to come from word of mouth from your neighbors. So we knock on the doors and tell them that the house is, is being listed. We enlist their help in getting word out. We invite them all to, an, uh, to a, a, an open house. And that serves two purposes for you. 
One, we don't allow anybody to look at the house until that open house. And it does two things. One, it gets your neighbor's word of mouth, one in ten chance of us finding the buyer just by docking those doors and making the phone calls. But secondly, it means that when those doors do open on Saturday or Sunday morning, it's like running of the bulls in here, mm -hmm. which is what we want. Right. So when that buyer is walking through here maybe with their agent, their impression is if they don't run right out this minute and put their best foot forward, they're not going to get this house. Right. That helps you from the price point of view. Right. So I kind of skip back and forth. Um, then I say, look, the, the key marketing factors, of course, are location, competition, timing, condition, terms, and price. That's what sells property. Um, so the other things that we do, um, the door-to-door the -door is the proactive prospecting. The other one is that we price watch. Right. Our market is at statistically at the end of an up cycle right now. And what we see when a market flattens out, we're still in the best seller's market I've ever seen, but we're starting to see some front end indicators that the market is flattening a little bit. And my experience in 20 years is that what happens when you see prices dip is that the market flattens a little bit, and then you start seeing a slow, 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 slow decline and then a drop off. The trick to um, making sure that you don't get caught in a bad position is to keep on top of what's happening in the market. If we list your house for 625 today and tomorrow your neighbor's house that is in worse condition than yours is listed for 650, we may need to adjust our price upward. Likewise, if the neighbor's house sells for $15,000 below yours and another one comes right on the market for for $5,000 less, we may need to have that conversation as well. So we proactively price watch we proactively prospect and we price watch to make sure that you have the most current market data to maximize what you can get out of this house in the moment that we're selling. Right. Okay. Now, does that ever that script ever create any concerns on the buy side when you mention a downturn in the market? Not really. Okay. Yeah. Um, not really because I tell them that we're in the slow part. <laughs> okay. Right. Mm -hmm. It's right. still good for them. Yeah. Right. Our team outperforms, and here I go through the statistics of what our average days on the market and the, the Denver's. Um, then I talk about the team advantage. And I say, look, I, I've done this both ways. I've been selling houses for 20 years now. I've done it all on my own, and I've done it with a team. And I can tell you from personal experience, when you do it on your own, I do everything. I write the ads. I place the internet ads. I set showings. Um, I uh, uh, measure the properties, I do research information, mm -hmm. talk to the appraiser, I do all this stuff by myself. What that means is I have less time to focus on service. It's just a reality. Right. When I was doing this on my own, I could probably handle with good service about six transactions a month. And that's just, a, that, that isn't buying it in this market. Right? Where's the reason we're seeing teams start to really rule the roost here is because they put the client at the center of that and then we hire to the individual needs of those service areas. Um, I am best going out talking to people, getting the houses sold, and I'm a pit bull in negotiation. That's where I should be all the time. And then I should hire Bree, which I have, who we stole from the Ritz-Carlton um, as a concierge to do um, all of our transaction coordination. Um, I've got somebody who all they focus on. See, mood rain. She's flashing. <laughs> <laughs> this too shall pass. It's like a drug experience. <laughs> <laughs> that rush. It's really weird. It's when you stop doing it, and you're like, it doesn't happen anymore. I wish my just flashes all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I wish my flashes. So I do when they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> Yet another another phase. Yeah. Uh, we've got somebody who um, who handles the transaction from the contract to close, so that nothing falls through the cracks. That's the advantage to a team. What's the next slide? Meet us. Good. More about the team. We need to yeah. clean that up a bit. We do. But here's what I want to deliver right about here is that yeah. it's a Gary Keller Gary Keller thing. He says that a team of highly trained specialists delivers by far superior client support, mm -hmm. customer oh. support. That's a, great, yeah. that's a great line. We should have a slide right here, that maybe the bottom of this one, that says, a team of highly trained specialists. Meet my home team, 
um, yeah. highly trained specialist, and then we can fill that in as scripture. And we yeah. say it. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. say that I love part. It. We know that. Remind me when I'm specialists. presenting. Okay. So here are some of our team members. Um, we also have got a division that focuses on new construction, so if that's something of interest to you. Um, I've got a gal who literally, you can ask her, I want a four-bedroom house with a first main floor master and an in-law suite and a three-car garage tandem. South-facing. South-facing <laughs> in the Denver, greater Denver metro area, and she will rattle off four communities for you and tell you whether or not they've got any standing inventory. She is expert at this. We're a big fan of paper list transactions. Um, I don't know if you remember the last time you sold the bought a house. We had this much paperwork. Hey, are we still three to three thirty or three to four thirty? We're working on it right now. Get out of town. Uh -huh. Join us. I was changed. I have I have a one thirty appointment. I have to I'm recording the whole thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Be on YouTube. So we don't have anything going on at three. Uh -uh. Do we? Can double check. I thought whatever it was. From noon to one was changed to three because I got That's uh, that was yesterday, I think, or something. I'm sorry, that was yesterday. But I'm recording this whole thing. Fear not. Okay. Fear not. What, what were we doing? Anyway? We're doing the presentation, the the PowerPoint. But right now we're working on the equity PowerPoint. So we'll we'll review the new build PowerPoint mm -hmm. on Friday. You're not missing anything. Okay, so do I need to come back? At don't come back no, at three. There's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. <laughs> I'd say we're big fans of the paperless transaction. I'm not sure. Um, so, so I discussed that. Um, benefits. I think we should probably even take this out. What it's just too cumbersome. About? I don't know. Okay. Listing with Keller Williams, reputation, professionalism, experience, locations, computerized multiple listing service. Maybe we just um, bullet these. Yes. Rather than the the yeah. foo foo. Yeah. Bigger. Uh, print and, and bigger bold type and bold. Yeah. Um, pricing and then um, uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that in the actual presentation I love what Joel does um, market trends and I don't always use this stuff right, right? if it seems like they're not interested or whatever then or if they're a higher D if they're already buying my cookies right, right? if they bought the pricing it. I yeah. just breeze through it um, look I don't need to tell you inventory, inventory is tight Right, we've seen um, uh, active inventory decline by 2.4 percent year over year, and that trend is just continuing. This would be a good slide for this week's stats. Yeah. Uh, this week we had so many come under contract, so many added to the market, so many mm -hmm. leave the market. That would be good. Um, all right, so let's start. Do you have a little sticky? Can you start a little list of stuff we want to change on here? I will. Right here. Change. Um, Let's on, under market trends. Let's put this week's MLS stats because that's something we can lever. Chris can just go ahead and put those in yes. there. Yes, right. Excellent. This week's MLS. And also, can you put in there update the team oh, slide? Yeah. Update team slide. My home team title. Add um, a group of specialists and update team members. Okay. Market trends. Oh, oh let's also, um, under benefits, benefits, bullet point out that slide and remove foo foo. This one is a good one if you've got an analyst, right? If you're talking to a high C, um, uh, just to know this is our, um, and this needs to probably be updated. Um, let's say the market trend slide needs to be updated monthly with Megan slide. Yeah. Because this gives us by price point, look in your price point of a million to million five, we saw 70 units sold in the seven county greater metro area um, last month uh, with an average of 100 days on the market and they are 1.3 percent of the market so um, on either of these two we could put in something specific for this six hundred thousand dollar house and say in the six hundred thousand dollar price range we got about two weeks worth of inventory what does that mean? that's what i like about using this one because you can just grab the scale Right? right, you could say in a 160 in this price point, we're looking at average days on market is nine, 
this is metro wide mm -hmm. or um, for, for for this area, um, and number of and then this gives us the same units sold mm -hmm. by month. Yeah. And a lot of people will get that, but there will be some that if you could just say to them, that means if not another house in six hundred thousand dollar range came on the market, we'd sell them all in two weeks. Yeah. Right. Love it when she talks that way. <laughs> so inventory discussion. <laughs> Um, this also is for high C price, right? Attract buyers. Um, that when we talk about, um, we're going to get our greatest um, in our pricing paradigm. And Jenny uses this a lot. And I'm going to start. I think that the use of this slide is to set the expectation of a price reduction. Yep. Right. Look in our um, in our experience, if you have ten showings, you should have an offer. Or if you've had two weeks with no showings, your property is probably overpriced. So in those, in either of those cases, if we get two weeks out and we either haven't had any showings or we've had ten showings and no offers, then the discussion I'm going to have with you is that we may have uh, overestimated the market value and we'll have a discussion about it. Is there anything we want to change here? No, nope, I think okay. that's good. Um, This one I hardly ever use. This again is pricing ahead of the market. Um, Jenny uses this a lot. Um, yeah, what does this say? Um, with raising the prices ahead of the market, in other words, a little bit higher, the market may go up enough to make that price attractive for buyers, maybe. Okay. Time can cure some mistakes and make people look smart. It's not going to overprice our house. No, so what this slide is saying that if you overprice your home, there's a chance that the market may come up to that price and make us no look guarantee. like we did a really good job. Yeah, but there is no guarantee that yeah. if we overprice the home, the market's going to trend up to that right. and that we're going to get it sold. So if we're maybe after pricing that pricing ahead of the market, let's add one in here that that says um, under pricing. If you price it low. The market will always find its value. If you price it high, the buyers won't show. Right. Okay. If you price it that's low, kind of like what we were talking the market, about. The market always, will always find the right value. Right. That's kind of like what we were talking about a day or two ago, where if you listed the home at a dollar, right, you would have your head would explode, but it would it it should theoretically It'll sell for market. market value. It'll find the market. If you price it higher, it'll sit. <laughs> It'll sit. Oh, I got it. Look at this. This is exactly oh, okay. what she's done. All right. So if you price it this high, they may get it. This may happen. Versus if um, um, in a market with a rising home value, you want a price that's ahead of the market. The market may go up to attract. Time can cure some mistakes. This is the same thing, isn't it? I think so. It's the same word, verbiage. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I like those two. So let's, uh, it's not clear. Well, the verbiage should be different on the second slide. It should say in a, yeah. in a buyer's market, pricing a home too high can yeah, lead you chasing the market. The track. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because this so one, let's it makes fix sense. the buyer market. Price ahead of the market slash buyer's market. Fix buyer's market. This one I like. I don't use it much, but I think I should. Here's the thing. We see weeks on the market the highest activity level, the most showings, the most yep. activity, the most inquiries, the most phone calls from the signs, that uh, the most people spot. right through your door is in that first two and a half weeks. Yep. Right. So if we are overpriced in that first two and a half weeks, we cut out all the advantage of having that first two and a half weeks. Right. <laughs> and we prevent a buyer from even walking through the door. That's true. Right. Right. Um, and, uh, this I usually plow oh, through. Oh, I like that. I like that slide. Why do you like that slide? This is saying that um, your chance of getting over list price decreases dramatically Tanks. the longer you're on the market oh, with your original list price. It. I do like that. Yeah. So yeah. basically what it's saying is once you hit the two week mark, mm -hmm. you're you're under your original list price guaranteed. Yeah, you're under your guaranteed. original guaranteed. list Guaranteed. You're going to be doing a price reduction and chasing that. And chasing the market chasing down, the, market. the perception down. Right. That is a good one. See, young Andrew. Um, now I'd like to discuss what type of relationships we engage in. 
with with our clients and then this we cut to the presentation mm -hmm. that we've been working on in the past two sessions right over the contracts using the contracts that's exactly Perfect. it and once we've done that then we get to, we talk about the contract to close process right um, look once we get this thing under contract I think these are out of order Can we move contract uh, yeah. close? Before Switch. talking about documents? Yeah. Switch contract to close process. With review documents. And the same with closing 101. That needs to be go to go before review documents. So with contract to close, um, here's one of the real values to having a realtor. I mean, it's one thing to get your house under contract. Any, anybody with a sign who can place a sign in the yard, put it on the MLS and pray, can probably get an offer on your property. That's the type of market we're in. But we're still seeing a 15% failure rate on contracts. And it's because of all of this stuff. Right. Coordinating the transaction. All right. So then we get to a decision, and, and the decision, I hardly ever even click to this one. I've, I'm at review documents, right? And right. usually and by the, the end, end of that, it, I say, yeah. do you have any questions? All right, well, if you'd like to get started, and I hand them the pen. Mm -hmm. right. Did I spell your name right? Yeah, did I spell your name right? <laughs> Isn't that that's a great way to a, start? That's a great way to get it started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is that spelled correct? Right? Did I spell you right? Okay. Okay. That's right. Probably that way I'm not that's... freaking them out by throwing a contract in their face. I'm checking the spelling. Mm -hmm. right. I'm a genius. I picked up a few things watching. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, so that is explaining the PowerPoint presentation. Now let's present it.